What does it mean to live together? On this land? In, in this, this place? place? Burnt Thicket Theatre presents We, we Treaty, Treaty People. People. Audio dramas exploring what it means to embrace all our relations. This week's episode was written by Shanda Stephenson, performed by Lisa Bayliss, Alan Long, and Aaron Okamason. Directed by Joel Birnbaum, with dramaturgy by Yvette Nolan. Original theme music by Daryl Doslaw, with Jordan Daniels, Marco Kichita, and Donnie Spadell. Recording, editing, and sound design by me, Tim Bratton. And now, recorded on Treaty 6 territory, we bring you The Yard with the Old Plow. Got cold last night. Yeah. Good thing I plugged my car in. Yep. Bob, there's a car on the highway. Probably broke down. I think there's someone in it. Come on. I'm serious. In the driver's seat. You can see the red toque. Why would they just be sitting there? Maybe waiting for help? Recognize the car? No. I'll go check it out. Well, be careful. Oh, Bob, not up here. Oh, Jesus, Murphy. Out of gas. Now I told him to come in and warm up. I've got a jerry can in the workshop. Should be enough to get him back into town anyway. Well, why didn't he stop in town when he came through? The co-op should be open by now. He's been out there all night. All night? Just get him some coffee. <sighs> Poor kid's nearly frozen. Give me your keys. I'll uh, get her started and bring her into the yard for you. Mm -hmm. Sit down. You live on the reserve? I used to. What do you mean, used to? I'm in the city now. <clears throat> Doing what? School. Polytech? U of S. Huh. For what? Arts and science for now. For now? Want to get into journalism someday. Huh. I'll 
those years of schooling. And on the taxpayer's dime, I suppose. Listen, lady. I got student loans, just like everybody else. Not our boys. We put money away so they wouldn't need them. Needs a boost. Where are your keys? What do you need my keys for? I didn't plug my truck in. <sighs> it won't start. I told you it was going to get cold last night. <sighs> There's something going on here. Why did he sit in his car all night? The yard lights were on. He must have seen we were here. Drop it, Bev. I'm serious. You think he was... You know... Casing the joint? That's enough, Bev. No, I mean... Uh, I said enough. <sighs> you, you get that cell phone charged? Mm -hmm. Find him a phone charger. Boys must have left a hundred of those damn things behind. Seems like a strange time of year to be coming out for a visit. Our boys are neck deep in midterms this week. Same here. But I had to come home for my cook on my grandmother's birthday. 95. Hmm. Mom, mom, calm down. I'm fine. I ran out of gas. I know I'm stupid. But with that headwind, I met that farmhouse with the old plow out front. No, it was cool. Needed a boost, then I'll head back to town and fill up. I know, I know. Keep my mouth shut. I love you too. Got her all warmed up for you. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. Name's Bob. Don't worry about it. Just next time you might want to fill up before you leave, you know? I thought the co-op was open later, I guess. It used to be, but they can't find anyone to staff it. <laughs> That's funny. My cousin applied there not long ago, and they didn't even call him back. Why don't you write down his name? I'll put in a good word for him. Oh, no. D don't be silly. I've been on the board of directors for 15 years. <laughs> They'll listen to me. Listen here. You tell your people. You know, your family. Your friends and all. You tell them that they're ever in trouble on this stretch of the highway. Trouble like you are in last night. Tell them to look for that old plow out front. I always keep the yard lights on, so they'll see it. There's always help here, night or day. You tell them that, all right? This yard's a safe place to come for help. I will. What did you tell him that for? Now we're going to have natives up in our yard at all hours. Indigenous. What? Indigenous. You know they don't like to be called natives anymore. Boys keep telling us these things. We ought to start listening. Oh, well, I've never known you to care about the feelings of indigenous people before. It's not about their feelings. It's about basic respect. Like, 
remember when we first got married and you'd get so mad when I called you wifey. My dad used to call my mom that and I thought it was cute. But you thought different. So I stopped saying it. It's the same thing. What's gotten into you? That kid. Think about it. He didn't come to us for help because he was afraid. Afraid of what? Well, as far as he knows, someone like that... Like that Gerald Stanley lives here. Bob! You would never... He don't know that. Are you so sure? If he'd come banging on our door in the middle of the night, you think we'd let him in? Or would I have gone for that old rifle in the closet? That thing doesn't even shoot anymore. But he don't know that. He don't know. What if old Johnson down the road spotted him? Oh, his guns do work. You heard what he said at the last council meeting? Trials got people all riled up. I've never seen anything like it. I don't blame the kids staying away. You know, he was asleep when I got to the car. Curled up as best he could inside his jacket. I knocked on the window and he jumped. He put his arms up to protect himself, like he was expecting... Well, you know... Expecting trouble. It's the same age as our boys, Bev. And none of them would have thought twice about going into a farm for help. He saw us, saw our light on, and decided to take his chances with the cold rather than risk knocking on our door. Imagine if that was one of our boys. Or if it had been a few nights ago, that real cold snap. That boy could have froze to death practically on our doorstep because he was afraid of us. I don't blame him. When have we ever given them reason to be anything but afraid? Did he tell you that he was afraid? Oh, damn it, Bev, he didn't have to. He grew up not 12 miles from us. We don't even know his name. What the hell is wrong with us? What kind of a community, what kind of a world have we made when a young kid like that is worried about getting shot in our yard? Just coming home to see his family. Same as our boys do every other weekend. He said it was his grandmother's 95th birthday. Imagine what she's been through. God, it's no wonder. It's no wonder. That's all I can say. Bob? We're good people. We've done our best. Tried to raise our boys right. Haven't we? I know. I know, Bev. And I know in my heart that I, that we could never hurt anyone. No. But we've also been going through life with our heads down, minding our own business. And if that's our best, well, it's not enough anymore. Not by a long shot. Better bring your car up. I'll start breakfast.
We Treaty People is a production of Burnt Thicket Theatre. Support our work with a donation and learn more about the artists at burntthicket.com. Special thanks go to the Canada Council for making this project possible. And to our season sponsors, Shercom Industries and SK Arts. This work was gratefully created on Treaty 6 territory and on the homeland of the Métis. Join us next time for a conversation with the artists about this episode of We Treaty People.